Hello, in this video we're going to take a look at convertible bonds. A convertible bond is kind of a mix between a bond and a common stock. So on one hand with a convertible bond you get some characteristics of a bond. You're typically going to get a coupon payment, although that coupon payment will typically be lower than the coupon payment on an ordinary bond. In many cases it might even be a zero coupon convertible bond, which means it doesn't pay a coupon. On the other hand, if the stock goes up, you can convert that bond into shares of the underlying stock at a fixed conversion ratio. What that means is, for example, a bond might be convertible into 10 shares of common stock, or maybe 15 shares of common stock. And that conversion ratio, the number of shares it's convertible into, is going to be specified in the bond, agree a bond agreement. So here we have an example. We've got a bunch of information up top. So these are some of the values that we're going to use. The conversion ratio. The conversion ratio is just how many shares of stock you can convert that bond into. The conversion price is effectively an exercise price. So if you think of an option, options have an exercise or strike price which tells us this is the point at which we're going to be buying the underlying stock or put selling the underlying stock. With a convertible bond that conversion price is equivalent to the strike price. It's the price at which we're going to want to rather have the stock rather than the bond once we hit maturity. Note that the conversion ratio and conversion price are connected to each other. So the $1,000 comes from the idea that that is the par value or maturity value of the bond. So the conversion ratio takes that par value divided by the conversion price. The conversion price takes that par value divided by the conversion ratio. So in order to work with a convertible bond, you either need to start with the conversion price or the conversion ratio. Once you have one of those, you can turn around and find the other. Another value we're going to be calculating is something called the conversion value. The conversion value tells us how much the bond is worth based on the underlying stock. So if we made that conversion today, what would be the equivalent amount of stock that we would have? Pure bond value. Now, a convertible bond is essentially a bond that contains elements of the underlying stock and elements of the bond. If the stock price is so far below the conversion price that it's not likely we're ever going to actually make the conversion, then we're going to value that bond purely on its bond value. We're going to ignore the conversion benefit because in that case it's like an option that's deep out of the money, so deep out of the money we don't expect we're ever going to convert. In that case we say what is it worth purely as a bond? So the conversion value says what is it worth purely based on the underlying stock? The pure bond value says what is it based worth purely on the bond characteristics? Now note that the bond price itself is going to be higher than the conversion value and higher than the pure bond value. The reason for that is there's some benefit to being able to convert. So we're going to have a slight premium, now maybe a large premium depending on the stock price, but we're going to have at least a slight premium to the pure bond value. The exception would be maybe if it's one day before the bond matures and the stock price is 20% of the conversion price, nobody's going to assume that it's going to be converted, so then it's going to be equal to the pure bond value. But in most cases, the bond price will be higher than the pure bond value, and it will be higher than the conversion value. So these are kind of like worst case scenario based on the stock, worst case scenario based on the bond itself. Conversion premium tells us how much extra we're paying above the pure stock value, so above the conversion value, 
in order to get that convertible bond. Downside risk tells us essentially how far the convertible bond price can drop, how much are we risking if investors say, you know what, that conversion feature isn't really worth anything. Now, value of calls. One thing to note on a convertible bond is that we can break a convertible bond down into actually two components. A convertible bond is actually equal to the bond itself plus call option on the stock. And so one of the things in valuing a bond is we're just going to say, well, what is that call option worth? So the pure bond value is going to tell us what the bond portion is worth the difference between the bond price and that pure bond value is what the call options are worth. So when we buy a convertible bond, we're actually buying an instrument that is equivalent to two separate financial instruments. One part bond, one part call option. And the value of the convertible bond is going to be based on how much is the bond itself worth, and how much are the options worth? And those options are going to vary depending on characteristics of the stock. The more volatile the stock is, all else equal, the more valuable the call options will be worth. The longer the time to maturity, all else equal, the more the call options are gonna be worth. Also gonna depend on the conversion price. Is that option near the money? Is it deep in the money? Is it deep out of the money? That's going to affect the speculative premium associated with these options. The bond price is going to be varied depending on how risky the company is. So how confident are we that we're going to get those coupon payments and par value if we don't convert? It's also going to be based on how high the coupon payment is. For example, a convertible bond paying a 1% coupon or a convertible bond paying a 6% coupon, all else equal, that 6% coupon is gonna give us a higher bond price. So the convertible bond itself, the value of that bond is going to vary based on characteristics of the bond as well as characteristics of the stock. So I wanna pause here and just recap some of the things that we've talked about. One thing to consider is the conversion ratio that's going to be inversely related to the conversion price. The higher the conversion price, the lower the conversion ratio. The lower the conversion price, the higher the conversion ratio. We have to know one of these two things in order to calculate the other. So if we're given the conversion price, we can calculate the conversion ratio. If we're given the conversion ratio, we can calculate the conversion price. Next up is the conversion value. What is the bond worth based purely on the ability to buy the underlying stock? The pure bond value. What is the bond worth based purely on the bond? Ignore the call options, ignore the convertibility feature. Just what is the cash flow stream of the bond worth? That's the pure bond value. Again, the actual price of the convertible bond will be higher than the conversion value and higher than the pure bond value. Conversion premium, how much extra are we paying for the ability to convert? Remember, a convertible bond has a call option built into it. So this is kind of like capturing some of that speculative premium associated with a call option. Downside risk. If this call option becomes worthless, then how far can the bond price drop? If that call option becomes so far out of the money or the time to expiration is so short that investors say, you know what, that's not worth anything, then there's still a floor value. It's still got a value as a bond. We're going to get the par value returned at maturity and we're going to get coupon payments. So there's still some floor protection and that's what we're calculating with the downside risk. How far can it drop before it hits that floor? 
the value of the calls, how much are those worth? And then one other thing, and I mentioned this earlier, the strike price, the conversion price is kind of similar to the strike price. So this is some of the terminology. In the next video, I'm gonna walk through an example of how to do these calculations and how to interpret these values. Thank you.